Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by Vitalis, V-I-T-A-L-I-S. Vitalis, the famous preparation that keeps your hair well-groomed and used with a speedy 60-second workout, helps you to keep your hair. And it shall be the duty of the District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Our case tonight opens in a recently completed defense factory located in your district attorney's city. Mr. Winstead, the personnel manager of the plant, is busily working at his desk. Winstead speaking. Hello, Mr. Winstead. Yes? My name is Preston. Yes? I'm calling you about that ad you got in the paper. The one where you're looking for skilled workers? Oh, yes. Did you get any answers to that ad, Mr. Winstead? Not a single one. Why? I didn't figure you would. Are you applying for a job, sir? No, I'm just interested in your problem. Well, look, old man, I'm very busy right now. You want I... skilled workers, don't you? Yes, yes, I need them very badly. But How many guys do you figure you need? Well, at least a hundred, immediately. But why should that concern you? I can get them for you. How? I got an angle. Now, look, you're wasting my time. I've spent weeks combing every available source for, to find men. There just aren't any to be found. I said I could get them for you, Mr. Winston. Where? I'd like to tell you that first. Meet me someplace, maybe? Well, Suppose I... I drop by in my car and pick you up. You can get me a hundred skilled workers. That's right. Very well. I'll be ready in half an hour. Where are we going, Mr. Preston? Oh, we'll just ride around a little. Now, I can't spend much time with you. Well, this shouldn't take long, Mr. Winstead. You say you can get me 100 skilled workers. Is that all you need? No, I can use as many as you find. Uh, we're working on a very important government war contract. Uh-huh. It's being delayed by lack of manpower. I've got to get men. Well, I'm the guy that can do it for you. Oh? Yeah, I got an angle. What is this angle? How long will it take you? A few days, a week maybe. Where will you get them? I don't know yet. You certainly make this all sound very mysterious. Well, you wouldn't tell me your business secrets, would you? Just what do you get out of it? Well, I collect what you call a commission light. Oh, from the workers? Oh, no. From you. How much? Oh, say, 10% of each guy's pay. And their first week's pay. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Why, that wouldn't even pay my expenses. Well, what is your price? Ten percent every week as long as you use them. Well, that's ridiculous. They might work at our plant for years. Sure. That could amount to almost a thousand dollars a week. I know. That's way out of line, Mr. Preston. That's my price. No cut rates. So how about it, mister? Well? If you stall around, it'll cost you more. All right. It's a deal. Okay. Where can you be reached if I want you? A friend of mine runs that bowling alley over on West Street. You can get me there. Very well. Now, I think we ought to put our deal in writing, Mr. Winston. Did you send for me, Chief? Uh, yes. Come in, Harrington. Right. Uh, let me have that letter on my desk there, Miss Meadow, please. Oh, this one, Chief? Yes, yes, that's it. What's up, Chief? I just received this letter from District Attorney Sanford. Sanford, West County? That's right. Now, this is rather important information he's passed on to me. Yeah. I want you to hear it, both of you. Yes, sir. All right, okay. Dear DA, I want to report a condition that has arisen up here in West County that is likely to spread down into your county as well. Huh? Due to the war, we've had a rapid expansion of defense industries. Many new factories have been opened up here. Huh? We welcome such effort, of course. But this welcome is tempered somewhat by a rapidly rising menace which is undoing all the good the expansion has brought. And this menace is labor pirating. 
Pirating? What's that? Yes, Harrington. And it goes on to explain. Labor pirating is the act of enticing workers from one plant to another by any and all available means. Of course, the real evil resulting from this pirating is that it slows up vital war production. Gosh. There's an acute shortage of skilled workers of nearly all kinds, so it's difficult indeed to replace those who are taken from one job to another. Oh, is that a scurvy racket? Any more, Chief? Yes, he says... The bait used ranges from the lure of higher wages to out-and-out kidnapping. Wow. In most instances, neither the employers nor the workers are at fault. The real offenders are a group of unscrupulous negotiators, usually ex-racketeers. <laughs> One of these is a man named Barney Preston. He has been indicted by our grand jury because of his activities in hijacking labor. I regret to tell you, however, that Preston has avoided arrest by leaving town. <laughs> I have information that he may have gone to your city. Yeah. Undoubtedly, he will continue his practice there. Any efforts on your part to apprehend him will be appreciated. Sincerely, yours, George Sample. Oh, how do you like that? Something new has been added, huh, Chief? Yes. Another field has been opened to the racketeers. Well, that kind of business is practically fifth column work. Yes, I know. I never sir. heard of this Preston guy. Did Sample enclose any information about him? There's a complete description. Good. I get out a general alarm on him right away, Chief. Yes, Harrington, I wish you would. Right. And, Miss Miller. Yes, Chief. I want to send a letter to the heads of all the factories in town. I want to warn them that labor hijacking will not be tolerated here. Nice one, Eddie. Gives you a spare. Yeah. Well, how's the bowling going, fellas? Oh, hello, Mr. Monroe. Hi. Hiya. I'm sorry I can't use that other alley. We're short of pin boys tonight. Oh, that's okay. We can do enough damage to one alley. Right, Eddie? Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> how's everything over the factory? Uh, the same as usual. Well, you boys better make it while you can, I guess. What do you mean? Well, I, I really shouldn't tell you this, but you fellas have been good customers of mine. Yeah. I guess it's only right you should know. About what? Well, a couple of the big shots from the plant were in here bowling a few strings last night. Yeah? They'd also been hitting the bottle a bit, so I guess that's why they were careless about what they were saying. Uh Uh-huh. I happened to overhear them talking about the government's going to cancel all the contracts with your factory. What? Did you hear that, Eddie? Yeah, how come, I wonder? Well, I heard this man say something about the motors didn't operate right when they were used on the fighting front. Well, what do you know? Did they say the factory was going to shut down or something, Mr. Monroe? Oh, if they blow the contracts, what else can they do? Yeah, sure. Yeah. None of my business, but if I was you fellas, I'd start scamping around for another job. Yeah, you're right. Uh, By the way, I just happened to hear about a plant that's looking for men right now. Yeah, where? You did? Yeah, it's a new factory just opened up on the other side of town. I need fellows in your line real bad. I think maybe we ought to hop over there, huh, Eddie? Oh, you said it. Uh, Thanks for tipping us off, Mr. Monroe. Oh, glad to do it. Hey, but look. Yeah? uh, Don't say anything to anybody else about it, will you? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Monroe. We won't tell a soul. Now... The way I got it was this, see? The government's canceled the contracts, and the plant closes down next week. Sure, sure. I heard it from one of the managers. The government inspector told me the whole thing. The plant closes down in four days. Sure, that's a fact. Now, if you're smart, you'll jump over to that new factory that just opened up over there. How many men did you say you've lost in the past few days, Mr. Doris? Over a hundred, Mr. District Attorney. Mm-hmm. And they're still leaving. It's serious. War orders are being held up. That's why I came here to see you this afternoon. Well, did you tell them there was no truth to the rumor? Well, yes, of course. But the story has been magnified so by now that there just doesn't seem to be any way of stopping it. Well, a published statement of denial from the government ought to take care of that. I'll arrange for you at once, sir. Well, that would help. 
But it still doesn't get back the men I've lost. No, I'm not. Hey, uh, look, Mr. Lewis, have you checked up on where these guys of yours have found new jobs? Yes. Most of them have gone over to that new factory on the north side. Hmm? Are you sure of that? Yes. They're doing important work, too, of course. Mm -hmm. War orders, but so are we. They've got no right to hire my men away from me. Yeah, Chief, I guess that guy's in town all right. Yes, I'm afraid he is. Uh, who's that? There's a man named Preston. Oh. He's a racketeer who specializes in hijacking labor. Say, tell me, Mr. Lewis, do you know why your men left? Is this new plant paying higher wages? No, no, they're not. I'm sure of that. We're both paying union scale, and mm -hmm. my men were getting plenty of overtime. I see. I've already spoken to a Mr. Winstead over there. He's the personnel manager. Winstead. I asked him to explain the coincidences that made so many of my employees go to his place yes. for work. What did he say to that? He just denied any knowledge of conspiracy. I well, suppose I talked to him. Yeah, his number is uh, Main 2800. All right, thank you. Yes? Uh, Miss Miller, would you get me Main 2800, please? Yes, sir, right away. I want to talk to a Mr. Winstead. Right, Chief. Uh, have you any idea how this rumor started, Mr. Lewis? No, I haven't been able to trace it at all. Eh, it sure don't take much to make them spread, does it? I should say not. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take him. Yes? I have Mr. Winstead for you, Chief. Oh, fine. Put him on. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, Mr. Winston. This is the district attorney. Oh, yes. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. What's on your mind? Well, I have Mr. Lewis, the president of Amalgamated, here in my office. Yes? We're trying to track down the source of this rumor that's robbed him of some of his best workmen. Oh, I see. I understand that most of his employees have gone to work for you. Is that correct, sir? Why did they select your plant? No, I, I don't know, Mr. District Attorney. Well, the reason I ask is that we believe there's a man named Preston behind all this. He specializes in hijacking labor. I wondered if he'd been to see you. Why, uh, why, no. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Winston. I may call you again if anything develops. You see, a serious offense has been committed against Mr. Lewis's factory. I intend to prosecute whoever's at the bottom of it. Uh, well, good day, sir. Goodbye. Did you get anything out of him, Chief? Oh, nothing definite. But he did seem rather upset by my questioning. Yeah. I think I may call on Mr. Winston. Mm -hmm. A good personal talk with him might accomplish a lot. Yeah. I'll see him the first thing in the morning. for me, Mr. Winston? Oh, hello, Mr. Preston. I didn't think you'd ever get here. I've been waiting almost two hours. Oh, that's too bad. Never mind that. I've got to talk to you, privately. Okay. We'll use the office here in the back. Come on. Yes, thank you. Why didn't you try a little bowling while you were waiting? Well, I did, uh, till I got too tired. Oh. We'll go in here. Yes, very well. Now, what did you want to see me about? Well, it really has to do with a misunderstanding. How's that? I had no idea that you'd use the methods you employed to get those workmen from me. No? No. How'd you think I'd get them? I Pick them you... off trees? I thought you were going to use legitimate means. You already tried that, didn't you? Yes, but... But what? Now, look, Preston. We need workmen badly. Uh... We've got a lot of government contracts, and they're important in winning the war. Yeah? But I know, somehow, you've been... What? Well, stealing men from the amalgamated plant. Stealing? Their work is important, too. I don't know how you got those men to leave, but I'm against getting them your way, that's all. You're a little late with that idea, ain't you? Not necessarily. What do you mean? I'm doing the only thing a patriotic American can do. I'm sending those men back to their original jobs. You what? I'm calling the deal off. That's what you think. Now, see here, Preston. I don't want to have any trouble with you. No? You see, I happen to know something about your background. Uh-huh. I learned that you make a specialty of hijacking labor. Where'd you find that out? The district attorney told me. Oh, now I get it. You're trying to wiggle out from under to keep your own nose clean. I'm merely trying to do the right thing, that's all. Look, Winston, you made a deal with me. You're going through with it, see? I intend to do just that. I'm going to pay you the commission on one week's salary for those men. That's strictly for chickens. My payoff comes every week. That's impossible. Don't forget I've got a contract with you, my friend. The DA might like to see that. That contract is not binding if I don't keep the men. Now, look, sucker. I don't want to waste no more talk on you. The deal stands. Oh, no. 
I'm not going to let you blackmail me. I'll go to the district attorney and tell him everything. Wait a minute. You stay right here. Get out of my way. Stay here, I said. Put down that bowling pin. Sure, where do you want me to put it? No, don't. Well, I guess they better set him up in the next alley. This labor pirating situation is a very serious one for all of us because of the way it cuts down on war production. And now, with Winstead murdered, your district attorney's job becomes doubly difficult. Before we hear from him again, though, you know, men, in these busy days when so much depends on the work we turn out, it's very important to keep physically fit. And that's why we get as much outdoor exercise as we can. It's so good for our general health. But it can be mighty bad for your hair. For the hot sun bakes it and makes it look dry. And the shower bath or swim afterward drenches your hair, making it look lifeless and stringy. Yes, that's true. But there's an easy, speedy way to help overcome the damaging effects of sun and water. A 60-second workout with Vitalis. V-I-T-A-L-I-S. Vitalis. This brisk massage with Vitalis loosens your scalp, stimulates the circulation, routes unsightly, embarrassing, loose dandruff and helps to prevent excessive falling hair. The pure vegetable oils of Vitalis come to the rescue of your oil-depleted scalp. So when you comb your hair, it lies smartly and smoothly in place and looks well-groomed. That's why thousands of men in all walks of life use Vitalis and the 60-second workout in spite of summer sun and soaking water. This famous Vitalis workout helps you to keep your hair for the days to come and keeps your hair good-looking every day. Now back to Mr. District Attorney. Mr. Winston's body was found early this morning, Miss Miller. Where, Chief? In a ditch beside a road on the outskirts of town. Well, how was he killed? Hit on the head with a blunt instrument. Oh, that's terrible. Yes. Were there any other clues? Well, the police are working on that now. Oh. The thing that bothers me is I might have prevented this if I had gone to see him last night. Oh, I doubt that, Chief. I honestly do. Yeah. Where's Harrington? He went over to Winstead's factory to see what he could pick up. Chief, do you suppose this man Preston killed Winstead? That's quite likely he did, yes. Well, the police still haven't been able to find any trace of him. Oh, I know. Uh, excuse me, Chief. Yes, come in, Harrington. Okay. How did you make out? Well, I, uh, I picked up some very tantalizing information. Yeah. Good or bad? Well, one thing is very good you can make book now, Chief, that the killer was this Preston guy. Oh, really? Yeah, I got that from Winstead's secretary. Well, how did she know? Well, she didn't. It's what she told me that adds up to that. Yes, and what was it? Well, right after you called Winston yesterday, he made another call. He dialed the number himself, but his secretary happened to overhear him ask for a Mr. Preston. I see. Well, Preston wasn't there, but he was expected. So Winston told whoever was on the other end of the line that he'd be right over. Then he grabbed his hat and hightailed it out. Well, mm. does the secretary know what number he called, Harrington? No, she don't. There's no way of checking it either. Uh... <laughs> I see what you mean by tantalizing information. Yeah. We know everything but the whereabouts of the murderer and the location of his hideout. Yeah. Well, where do you go from there, Chief? Well, there's one thing we can try to trace to its source. What's that? The origination point of that rumor. Yeah. We can be reasonably sure now that Preston started it. Yeah. That might lead us to him. That's right, Chief. But how do you find that source? Well, I think Harrington can help us out there. Me? What do I do? Yes, I want you to go to Winstead's factory. Yeah? I'll arrange for you to get a job there. All right. And try to talk to every man who left Lewis's plant because of the rumor. Right. One of those men must know where that rumor started. Hi, Miss Miller. Where is he? Well, he's still at police headquarters, oh, Harrington. Oh, boy, I got a red-hot lead for him. Really? Yeah, I think I found out where that rumor was started. Where? Well, I got it from two guys. They didn't want to tell me at first. I had to flash my tin before they'd even talk. Well, what did they tell you? Well, it seems they got the story from some guy who runs a bowling alley right near Lewis's factory. Yes? He handed it out to them as very confidential stuff. Well, that's <laughs> how all rumors are planned. Ah, uh, sure. Well, I'm going over and see that guy right now. Well, what'll I tell the chief? Well, just give him the information I just gave you and tell him that I'll call back as 
soon as I make sure I'm on the right trail. Well, when will that be? Just as soon as I make that guy in the bowling alley talk. Are you Mr. Monroe? Yes, that's right. Oh, good. My name's Harrington. District Attorney's Office. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. Sit down, Mr. Harrington. <laughs> Thanks. What seems to be the trouble? Well, I'm on a kind of a tough assignment. Yeah? Yeah, I'm uh, chasing a rumor. See any laying around here? <laughs> no, but that don't prove nothing. They never show up till you get them in the light. Oh, that makes it tough, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, not always, uh... What made you look here? Well, I got information that this is the place where the particular rumor I'm chasing got started. Is that so? Yeah. As a matter of fact, Mr. Monroe, I understand that you were the guy who put it underway. Uh, what was this rumor? Well, it had to do with the factory across the street closing down. You spread that report, didn't you? No. No? I might have talked about it, but that was only because I was... What I heard some other guys say. Uh, but you did talk about it to men who were working in that plant. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> they were good customers of mine. I didn't want to see them wind up on the limb. No. Uh, Monroe, did you ever hear of labor pirating? Uh-uh. Well, suppose I ask you another question. Did you ever hear of a guy named Preston? Barney Preston? No. Don't know the answer to that one either. <laughs> I'm doing very good this quiz game, am I? <laughs> no, you ain't, but don't let that worry you, brother. I, I ain't got to the jackpot question yet. <laughs> What's that? Well, it has to do with a guy named Winston. His body was found in a ditch outside of town. Winston? Yeah, he was doing business with Preston. Preston was hijacking labor. Mm -hmm. He was able to do that because of a rumor. Now, you started the rumor. Now, give well, me the answer to that one, wise guy. Well, I'm sorry. i got to blow that one, too. Oh, that's too bad. Well, suppose we played this game in a new location. What do you mean? I'm going to take you down to headquarters. The DA will ask the questions from here on. Hi, Monroe. Uh, who's this? My name's Harrington. Who are you? What's it to you? Your name wouldn't be Preston, would it? Why? I've seen pictures of a guy by that name that looks just like you. Yeah? Yeah. Don't reach for that gun, copper. I got you covered. What? Nice going, Monroe. Who is this guy? Cop from the DA's office. Well. He's been playing a game, trying to get some answers. I got my answers. Sure. Only they ain't going to do you any good. No? Sit down again, copper. Sure. We're going to play another game. Only this time, we ask the questions. <laughs> Is that you, Chief? Yes, Mr. Hunter. Well, how'd you make out at headquarters? Oh, very well. I examined Winston's body and found what may be an important clue. Really? Yes, it more or less identifies the type of place in which he was killed. Oh, that's swell, Chief. Uh, have you heard from Harrington? Well, yes, he came in about an hour ago. He seems to have found something, too. Uh, the source of the rumor? Uh, yes, at least he thought so. Mm -hmm. He was on his way to investigate when he called. Who is he after? The proprietor of a bowling alley located near Lewis's factory. A bowling alley? Yes. You say you went there an hour ago? Well, yes, Chief. What's wrong? Well, the clue I found revealed that Mr. Winstead was murdered in a bowling alley. What do you want to jockey around with this guy for, Monroe? Let me knock him off now and get him out of here. No good. They came up with that Winstead guy before he was cold. Just because you were in a hurry. What do you think we ought to do? Put him on ice till the joint closes. Then you can put him away for keeps. Don't you guys know it's rude to talk about somebody when they're right in the room? Keep quiet, copper. You mean just because you tell me to? Shut up, I said. Oh. Brother, if you didn't have that gun in your hand. Look, Monroe, I can't wait around here till the joint closes. There's too much heat on me. You want to get rid of this guy, don't you? Sure, but why can't you take care of him? Because that ain't in my line. Nice, clean fellow. Well, I ain't hanging around, see? Look, suppose I give it to him now, then you can get rid of him. You can do that, can't you? Well, okay. But no guns. I don't want any noise. I'll give him the same thing I gave Winston. No, you won't, brother. You ain't got nothing to say about it. I got this much to say. You're going to have to use a gun on me and use it now. 
I ain't waiting for that fool and pin. Get away with me. Give me that clock. Get away with it, man. Show me. Get away with it. I'll let you two stand where you are. You're covered. Take that gun away from him, Harrington. Right, Chief. Thanks for the lift. Uh, who are these men? Well, this character here is Barney Preston. Oh, well, this is a pleasant surprise. Harrington, you may arrest him for the murder of Mr. Winston. Of course, we know Preston murdered Mr. Winstead. But how can your district attorney be so certain of it? Well, we'll hear the unusual clue that gave him the solution of the case in just a moment. First, men, when you crawl out of bed these August mornings and your face feels hot and sticky, enjoy a quick, smooth shave with Ingram's. Yes, with Ingram's shaving cream. Because Ingram's lather is purposely made cool to make your face feel cool... And keep it feeling cool for hours. But that's not all this cool lather of Ingram's does for you. It piles up on your face in great velvety billows. It conditions your skin and softens and wilts your whiskers. Gets your beard and skin all ready for your razor. So with Ingram's shaving cream, you shave quickly. Yes, some men say that by using Ingram's, they cut minutes off their shaving time. Also, you shave smoothly and cleanly and look younger when you're finished. Finally, you shave pleasantly, for the cool lather of Ingram's makes your face tingle with a feeling of delightful coolness, and it keeps your face feeling cool long after you've put your razor away. So, men, why don't you use Ingram's? That's I-N-G-R-A-M-S, Ingram's Shaving Cream. It's that famous shaving cream that you can get in either a jar or a tube, whichever you like. Now, why not get a jar or a tube of Ingram's from your druggist tonight? And enjoy a quick, clean, cool shave with Ingram's tomorrow. Now, here is your district attorney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think the first thing you should know is that we were able to get a conviction against Barney Preston for the murder of Winston. And he paid for this crime with his life. Oh, Chief, I think you should tell the folks about the clue that you found when you examined Winston's body. Very well, Miss Miller. That clue was some powder-like substance that I found under one of Winston's thumbnails. On examination, this substance turned out to be a special kind of chalk that bowlers use to keep their fingers dry when they handle the ball. I was then able to establish that Winston must have been in a bowling alley at some point just before his death. And that's why you came running over to Monroe's alleys on the double, huh? you? Yes, Harrington. I knew there was a good chance of you meeting the same fate. Oh, I'm glad you sent that Monroe guy away, too, Chief. He was getting a cut from Preston. He'll have time to 15 years to think up some new rumors before he gets out. Yes, and speaking of rumors, Harrington... I'd like to repeat at this time a message that I sent to every employer and war worker in our city. And these were the words. If you are engaged in any work that will help our nation win this war, stay with your job. Don't listen to rumors or offers of better pay or even seek easier work. The production line is the front line here at home. Anyone who disrupts this line is guilty of sabotage, just as Preston was. This is the people's war. By your effort, we can win it. Right, Chief. And if a guy's looking for a job where he can help win this man's war, the place to find out where he's needed is the nearest United States Employment Service office. They give all the dope on all kinds of defense jobs. Yes, indeed they can. What about next week, Chief? Well, next week we'll have another dramatic case, the case of the phony payoff. It's a colorful and exciting story. I hope you'll remember to join us again next Wednesday, and until then, thank you and good night. The names of all characters in a nice dramatization are fictitious and in resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Jay Johnston was featured in the title role. Len Doyle as Harrington. Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeten and the authors were Ed Byron and Jerry Devine. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by the Bristol Myers Company, makers of Vitalis, used by more men to keep their hair well-groomed than any other preparation of its kind. Just think of the word vital and add I-S. Vitalis, Vitalis for your hair. Friends, the sponsors of Mr. District Attorney cordially invite you to hear radio's most popular modern songsters, Dinah Shore in person, over another network every Friday night. Consult your local paper for time and station. Hear Dinah Shore next Friday. program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.